Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We are back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I go by CEO Peso. So blessed, highly favored. Have a new guest on the show. Shouts out to everybody, by the way, that is like dream chasing. I don't say that enough, but, um, you know, we try to just set the narrative and whatever scale we start at, we we just trying to just build it up. You know what I mean? But now nah, I have a special guest on the show. Somebody that um, I was talking before. I don't know how we met, but it was a very organic way how we met. And we meshed good. We talked, you know, we, we, on, we on the same shit. Introduce yourself for these people. What's the deal? Uh, I am Deja Demings. West, De- West Side, Deja Demings, the Hope Dealer. Are you, you can put any, any drop you want. West Side, what? Hey, what? I said, um, Hope what? Dealer. Um, the Hope Dealer. The oh. Catalyst. Yep. Um, but nah, simply just Deja. How you feeling? I appreciate good, you. Good, man. Appreciate you for having me. We in the building. We in the hey. building. Nah, man. How's your, how's your mental? How's, uh, how's life? Is life life in? How you feeling, though? Life is definitely life in right now. Goddamn right. Um... <laughs> But it's supposed to when you, you know what I'm saying, transitioning. So I'm just enjoying the, the journey and looking at the good, you know what I'm saying? Well, you go always go through stuff, you know what I mean? But it's mm-hmm. just the way that you react when you go into it. So I'm trying to change the way that I react, you know what I'm saying? So Think before you react. Yeah, Man. it's harder than it sounds. Yeah, no, it really is, though. I mean, that comes with hella maturity. But, uh, I, I, uh, man, shouts out to YouTube Shorts. I'll be scrolling, unfortunately. And it was like... um. Somebody was like, man, if if your uh what do you say? What do you say? If your problems ain't growing, that means you ain't growing. Like Ooh. the bigger your problems is, that means like Ooh. the bigger that you growing with the shit though. You know what I mean? That's so nah for real though. When That's he said fact. it, I it was like, It makes so much sense if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, because like, it's like, you know, if you just simple minded doing like the 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 basic of the basics, like it's gonna be the regular. But it's like if your problems are getting bigger. That mean you ain't growing enough, like you know what I mean. You're stagnant. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you stagnant. Man, all right. So, um, yeah, man. Um, a little bit of background. Um, we talked about where you was raised that, but how was the upbringing? How was everything? Like just on to come up as you as a youngin, Dej as a <laughs> the youngin, baby Dej. Um, <laughs> I mean, as I look back, like I didn't have everything in the world. Mm. But I wasn't going without, you know what I mean? So I had just enough to get me to school and get something to eat, but I might not have the new shoes. You know what I'm saying? Um, But my upbringing was cool. My mom loved me. Uh, I got a baby sister that's 10 years younger than me. Like, we all three thick as thieves, like, and my dogs. You the oldest? I am. Okay. I am. I'm the oldest out of my mom's kids, and then out of my dad's kids, I'm the middle child. So you know how that go. But nah, um... Growing up, it was cool. Got older, start hustling, working at like 13. Definitely been working since I was old enough to. Mm. Um, had crazy jobs. My first job was a butcher at Estridge. Shouts out to Estridge on hey, uh, uh, Hoover. Paying you under the table. When I say I was lit, I, and then I worked at Devereaux too, I had all the shoes. Devereaux, not City Gear hey. for people who. Don't understand the, young the back end. Yeah, Devros. Nah, nigga. We couldn't, talking about Devros. Yeah, bro. you couldn't wait to get a job back in the G at Devros, Everybody knows bro. where to get your clothes. <laughs> Devros. Devros. <laughs> <laughs> Devros. Nah, so, um, nah, so what What would you say sparked that just like that, that hustle mentality? Like, you know, at 13, I mean, I got an answer for it, but at, thir- at 13, 14, it's not a lot of people who got that development of like you know i want to get money or yeah. whatever case is i mean because it probably started before 13 but for you what was it that just made you so diligent to just like man i gotta like just get the shit going for myself that's crazy you asked me that i was about to say with the whole t- turning 13 and like being able to work and stuff like that that was a result of me not having them new shoes you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. everything that i wanted i might not have got it Right. Unless I tried to get it myself. And what other way can I get it than, than working for it? So that's when I learned how to work. I didn't want to. You know what I'm saying? I was 13. All my other friends was in camp. You know what I'm saying? In AAU. Shit. No, I'm walking to work three, four I think, times I a think, week. I think I was in the middle of learning how to drive. I was definitely driving. Like, th- yeah, that was like that 15 mark. Of like You got to have like yeah. grow up at this point. Yeah, so... 
Nah, I, I totally understand that though. Yeah. Nah, so um, so the hustle mentality, like you know, you you working, you doing everything. What was the like? Cause I feel like that was at a point to where it was actually a middle class. Cause I I can yeah. agree with you though. It was like poor, middle. Like it wasn't too bad, right. but it was it wasn't too it wasn't good. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Then you got the the upper joint though. So. Where, where did you get your discipline from uh, to to just start like man I'm about to you know walk to work while they playing I'm going here getting the money like where did that stem from? Um, I would say the women in my life. Like, I've watched the women in my life do whatever it is they need to do to make sure everything done. was handled. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Always told me when I was there, like, hey, the world is not going to hand you anything. Like. You got to make moves. You got to get it. You want it, you got to go get it type stuff. So I would definitely say it was them. Um, my aunt, like with the hustling, my aunt's been an entrepreneur since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about some my first job was working at 13. I was working for my aunt at nine. She had a store on Brown Street. <clears throat> it's like called Glow or something like that or whatever it is. What about, uh, UD? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that used to be her store. Like me and my cousin, nine years old, holding her store down while she at work. Oh, so you, you so, so you, like I literally you seen like, entrepreneurship at a yeah, super early age, yeah, and didn't even know it was entrepreneurship until I got older. Yo, I just thought G my aunt couldn't make up her mind on what she wanted to do, type stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, G shit, bro. Nah. Shouts out to uh, Aunt Patty. I love you, R.I.P. She had a store in uh, the Salem Mall selling uh, African artifacts, mm. and for you to say that, it just was like I didn't know. I didn't see the magnitude of like all oh, this. She got a store in Salem Mall. This one Salem Mall was Salem. Like, hey, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but but yeah, like we, I didn't understand it. But you know, we just go up there and you know, like let's you know, auntie, let's get some money. But but yeah, it's crazy though because I didn't really understand what entrepreneurship was, and she had her own joint in the mall though. Yeah. So yeah, so um, you got a vibrant, um, addictive characteristic though. So. What was your first start of like uh, really working for yourself? Um, I told you uh, by schooling, um, I'm an engineer. Right. Um, I was doing engineering for about like six, seven years. Explain um, that though, because engineering it can be confused from so music engineering or the other. Oh uh, nah. So I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about um, biomedical engineering. Okay, let's talk um, about it. Yeah. So I was working at this spot. Um, only black person, only woman, only black woman. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> All perspective. And in that space, I didn't feel appreciated no matter what I brought. You know Why? what I'm saying? Um, it's a... I mean, I know you said the, the, the black women thing, but... It's just a male-dominated field, a white male-dominated field. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just harder. I'm lucky I got through the door type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like with one of these situations, in the places that I've experienced, it's a situation like, oh, uh, well, we, we got to have some black people in here. You know what I'm saying? Not saying like I'm the last resort or anything like that, but that's all they see stuff sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Wait, 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 hold on. We, I can't just go past that real quick. So you saying like it did there felt like a sense of like to keep the uh, ratio smooth, we need to have a, a black person in here on top of that a black female on top of that i mean not that i'm not with them no more i can tell you this uh <laughs> i remember when i applied for the job i'm like yo like this is me like i always drove past the building i'm like this is the spot i want to be at like god please like praying on it like mm -hmm. this is what i want to do like got there did what i could well i did what i did like i was like that great. shit yeah, yeah. like art I mean, we black. We already know we got to go twice as hard. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. Like, in engineering, like in science. Yeah. Like, I'm, no, I'm I'm going. Like, I'm and that, that, all And that is a, I mean, like, not to be, like, cliche, but that is, like, a white male dominant thing of, like, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> the, people don't think of that profession the way, you know, how you see it. Like, uh -huh. yeah, you over here praying to get into the joint. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm doing that one. And they called me and told me I didn't get the job. Mm. So I'm devastated, bro. Like, I didn't went through all the interviews, like, all of that. Um, and then maybe a month later, 
they called me and was like, oh, yeah, we made a mistake. Like, we want to hire, you know what I'm saying? We want to get you the position. Um, at first, I was like, nah, and then they offered me more money. I'm like, cool, let's do it. But a little like, leverage, a little leverage. <laughs> yeah, but even with that, like, I wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wasn't happy. I didn't feel like I was doing all that I could do, like, with my gifts. Um, so in 2014, I used to carry this little book around. I'm going to show you before we leave, so you know I ain't lying. Let's go. I used Let's to go. carry these little uh, composition notebooks around because I'd be forgetting shit. Yeah. So i just be writing down my thoughts, like what I feel or what I want to do or something like that. So mm. I think it was like October. October 2014, 2015, I had wrote, like, hey, I want my own nonprofit. I want to work with kids. I want my own building. I want my own school. And it's just like, yo, looking at this list, I'm crossing shit off. And I don't even remember writing this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just ended up finding the book because I got a new whip and I found it in my trunk. I'm like, yo, like, I'm really doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, regardless if I forgot, like, that's true to me. And that's, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Not, yeah. so... I mean, because you, you, you deal with kids now. And um, like I said, we talked about... uh. Uh, you you the oldest of what on your mom's side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I always like to ask this question, but do, do you feel like you grew up too fast because you had to be the oldest to kind of facilitate your younger your younger siblings? Um, I would say yes and no. I'm very childish, so like it's people <laughs> out there. Me too. Like, though. She is like... not mature at all. But nah. Um, <laughs> did I have to grow up fast? I would say yes. I mean, even that's the reason why I got a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what? really? I mean, that's, I felt like I wanted stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want to be a burden or stress nobody out to make them have to go work super crazy because I, you know what I'm saying? I want to do this when I'm old enough to work and go can do it myself. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So, and, and like I said, we, we was at an age where it was normal to, um, uh, Shit, hurry up and get a get a gig quick and it's normal for us to drive at fourteen. I don't know any <laughs> black person that was not driving when they was fourteen years old. Man, bro, I, like, I love permit fifteen, license sixteen. Like car yeah. outside. Yeah, for sure. Going to the store because my mom don't feel like driving. Like that that's a right spot. That's a Man, right look, spot. I was gonna play Granny's numbers. Go <laughs> <laughs> you know get some cigarettes. Like I need you to I, yo. let me send you with this little yeah. list to hand it to them because <laughs> right. they go get you my beer too. Straight like, gas station talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's that's so cigarettes. Funny. Yeah. Nah, um Yeah, okay. So you transcended. Um so let's talk about what you do what you do now. Like what what you got going on. Sure. Um Got out of that job, um, and then I worked for myself for like three, four years, um, just doing my nonprofit full time. I'm the founder and the executive director of Dating Young Black Professionals, um, an organization that's basically trying to lift as we climb um, and give other people the guidance on the way. Okay, you know what I'm saying um, you doing that by yourself? I wouldn't say by myself. No, nah. I think that I honestly. I don't take credit for anything. You know what I'm saying? So I say that this was like a, a collective community thing. Like, this is what the community wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't just sit and, I mean, I was like, yeah, I want to have something. You know what I mean? Like, but I would have never been able to do that without people. We need people. You okay. Know what I'm so, so just for the people, just to clarify it. What is a nonprofit and how do you benefit from a nonprofit? So a nonprofit is. Um, basically a bit a business, but like you don't have employees. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could have employees depending on. How you, I'm I'm speaking about mine Supporters. personally. Yeah, so mine is basically just a charity that I can get money from people and send them tax. They get tax deductible money. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I just use it for real to make my own. Rules, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so mm -hmm. many systems and stuff that we have to follow. There are things that you could do when you're with a nonprofit that you could never do in the corporate world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. simple stuff, you know what I mean, that you would never be able to have say so. With with a nonprofit, you have you have voice and choice. You know what I'm saying? You have the, voice the autonomy and to, mm. to have, you know, a part of you in that. Because most of the time with these nonprofits, since they're, like, starters, mm -hmm. not most of them, but, like, Speaking uh, for a vast me. majority, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Like, I was learning as I went. Like, I was in the dark, trial like, and error, one step at yeah. a time. Like, oh, I can't go that way. Like, and that was cool. You know what I'm saying. Now that I'm older, I appreciate it. But 
I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, I mean, because I, I feel like a nonprofit is like a, a very self selfless thing. Like you, you, yeah. you care. I don't get no money out of it, it that, and that, I never yeah. wanted to. I don't, I don't, I don't. I ain't even gonna say it like that, but like, not. Nah, but I'm, but, but I'm, I'm saying a like, but you doing, money. yeah. I was say you doing it yeah, just out of the aspect of like, you know. It's it's hard to meet people that really just care for the community and care for shit. It, you you basically putting your time and effort be, to everybody else before yourself, if that makes sense. I just feel like I just feel like my gifts and talents are not for myself. Like, what do I get out of just giving myself my gifts and my talents? I don't get anything out of that. I have my gifts and my talents to share them with other people. You know what I'm saying? I share my gifts and talents with other people so they can, like, okay, let me figure out what my gifts and talents are. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I do that? You know what I'm saying? Just trying to make sure people ain't just blindsided. I had no... I, I did grow up too fast. I had no idea what I was doing. Nobody could tell me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody could tell me about college, bro. Like, yeah. fast food, none of that stuff. Like, I literally... Figured out as you Yeah, that shit, yeah. Because that's what you got to do, like... Life don't stop because you don't know. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it don't stop because you don't know. You, you, damn you right. might not know till later, but, like. But you, it's up to you to pick up. Like, yeah, like, yeah. meet it halfway. Like, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? So. I love that. I love yeah. that. All right. Um, so, we was talking before the camera came on. Um, Shouts out to Amber. Amber Smith. Passion to the plate. Um, You said you was comfortable talking about it. So, uh, <clears throat> you got diagnosed with MS. Yes. Uh, I fuck up the name. Multiple. Sc- Multiple sclerosis. Sclerosis. Right. Yeah. And, you know, for me talking to her, it just sounds like, you know, depending on what level it is, like, it's hard for y'all to even maneuver through a day having yeah. that, though. Yeah. Um, just like I told you, I'm very private. Um, I don't know if it's because, like, I'm shy and I'm an introvert. Like, of course, what I do makes me an extrovert, but I'm an introvert for real. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is our profession. Like, yeah, we yeah. got to be in the light a little bit. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, what you ask me? No, so, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we give me that in. Hey. Nah, so just when you have an MS, um, how, how, what's your uh, level... What's your way of balancing out, like, having MS and still, like, you know, being able to maneuver through your life like with with every like you know because obviously your job comes with stress life comes with stress you got damn right hey life comes with stress my boy but uh nah um even though i've had it for like six years i mean i've had it my entire life i found out but even though i was diagnosed uh only six years ago i'm still learning stuff every day like i'm having new symptoms Every day, like different things with my body that have never happened before. Like as time goes on, you know what I'm saying? But working out, um, eating good. My wife got me on fifty vitamins that I take every day. Yeah. Um and so, just try not to stress for real. So the support system is definitely Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I'm I'm straight. Like if I don't if I ain't got nothing else, my support good. system is why I do what I do. Solid, solid, man. So, what's the scale up? I mean, you know, you're doing a non profit right now, um, you've been doing great with it as well. But, um, what's how you scaling up with it? Like, what's the next level of like, I just want people to understand like, a non profit is like everything that she's taking to her efforts to make it bigger. But, like, how much more can it go? Like, where are you trying to go with it? Um, I'm always dreaming without walls, so I think it can go. Hold on, say that again. I'm always dreaming without walls. Let's go, man. <laughs> Yo, I'm I was always, not about to let that just slide. Hey, like, that's yeah. solid and motherfucker. No, yeah. For real, I always uh, dream without walls. So I think that it can go uh, whatever, wherever, you know what I'm saying, it could. I'm very transparent mm-hmm. um, with the whole process because I want people to be like, oh, that's not hers. That's not just hers. That's ours. You know what I'm saying? So getting buy in. Um, Ain't you, um, ah, man, I don't want to mess it up, but, um, you went to college. Mm -hmm. So ain't you like. A Sigma woman? Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. Not the pinky though. Oh, my bad. My bad. I got the pink on my bad. I am a Sigma woman. 
So I want to. I just want to touch on that because that was intriguing to me. Like when I seen it, I'm like, oh shit, that's a whole nother level of discipline, though. So oh, yeah. what what did that do for you? For you to commit to that and like, how did that like? Did it help you shift like how you maneuver like far as discipline and everything like that? Like, um, one thing that I will say is. That's something I wanted to do for a really long time. Word. Even like when I was in college. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I did grad chapter. Um, shout out to Epsilon Kappa Sigma chapter. Um, Say that. <laughs> but um, it, sh- it was just showing me that like, I always tell my little sister like, hey, everything that I say that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. Facts. I don't care if it takes me 15 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's something that I want to do, I am going to do it. I mean, even if it's something crazy, like maybe I got an attitude and I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna, gonna get do it. it. Done. Yeah, yeah, like, damn right. That's just how it works. But I, I was just blessed to be able to sit down, like you know, like thank you, God, like something else, like check that off, like yep. you're literally letting me live my dreams. You know what I'm saying? So super grateful for that. Um, it just brought me a whole new set of connections. I feel like that was the only network that I was really missing connections on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. We outside. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> nah, um, so not to, just to go back real quick with the MS though, um, was that, have you ever felt that condition that you got diagnosed with, like, held you back? Or did you let it in a sense? Never. Talk Never. about, talk like, about it. Excuse me, I was just telling my boss, um, like a month ago, like, yeah, because when, uh, when my MS flares up, I lose my vision. Right. Um, I lose my vision. My The bottom of my feet hurts, so can't really, like, crawling around the crib type stuff. Like, G-shit? Back spasms. Like, yeah. Headaches that's, like... Out of this world. Unbearable, bro. Like, yeah. I'm not getting up. Like, yeah. But, yeah, like, even with going through all of that, like... This is pull through. I, I don't have a choice. Like, they definitely ask me, like, hey, you want to be on Social Security? I'm like, bro, no. Like, I got a life to live. Like, it, it's stuff that I want to do. Like, you're not going to limit me. Like, I understand that you're telling me I got this and I've had it for a very long time. But if you're telling me that I had it for 25 years, I can make it 25 more. Like, <laughs> like I, I'll right. be good. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, don't don't count me out just because it's something that I can't control. Yeah. That don't mean that I'm going to let it control me, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I still do what I'm doing. Sometimes my wife be like, hey, let me hide your keys. You don't understand your body. You need to chill. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, a couple of days, that's where that I get sick or something. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. she always know. But, um, I, I, I can't. I mean, you a go-getter. I mean, so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People be chirping like, hey, you need to chill. But, like, I... I'd be bored. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I'd be bored. And I don't just I mean, sit on my it, phone. It, it, so like, it's, re- it's, really, it's really like, like you can choose to feel like you cripple or you could choose to like. Oh, yeah. It like could you, definitely be a woe is me situation. Nigga, I could definitely be in a fucking corner depressed off this shit. It ain't no cure for this. I know. You know what I'm saying? I like know. there's no cure for this. And when I go to the doctor, when I go to my neurologist and shit, I don't see nobody walking in that bitch. They all in wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so to have, like, when I had pains in my legs, I'd be freaking the fuck out. Like, bro, please don't let me not be able to walk in these <laughs> shoes, bro. I just got these motherfuckers. Like, right. please. You I know just what bought saying? these but, ones. Hey, what? <laughs> we already trying not to crease them down. Yeah, you feel me? my leg. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but. um, Nah, that's dope, though. Yeah. And, and um, so the next question I had was, um, you know, to, to have that attitude of what you do. And then, you know, you. You still in, still in life to these these kids. You putting a mask on it though. So, what is it about the youth that you just feel like it's so necessary to like push that narrative, like to push push the to be so engaged with children's futures? Um, if that makes sense. Nah, for sure. Uh, I was actually in a symposium earlier, and I answered that question. <clears throat> I want to be what I needed when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Like. I definitely had parents that loved me, all of that. But, like I said, you don't know what you don't know. So, like, if they don't know how to show me how to do something because nobody ever did it for them, you know what I'm saying? That's where that generational 
cursed God, stuff be yeah, coming in. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or just the stuff that Shout out to my people that never told me about credit. You but, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just stuff <laughs> that we didn't know about. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I didn't just randomly go into engineering. Like, when I was a little kid, I was getting in trouble for taking my radio and my PlayStation apart. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But if I had somebody around me, you know what I'm saying, or different types of people around me or, like, different types of adults around me could have been like, hey, you really good with your hands. Mm-hmm. You could do this, this, and this. Or these are your good things, like. You know what's funny? Like, like literally, literally being transparent, like, uh, my son was helping my mom, like, build, like, a, a, like a little thing in the backyard, but it was, like, you know, poles and, you know, uh, pole A, like A B C, and I literally seen him. Um, you know, just kind of like just this needs to go here, and like I, I literally seen him at a at nine years old. Like damn, like you really like be looking at stuff like you could really construct something from just because kids are geniuses. It's crazy. No, it, they it, just don't know where to put it. Yeah, like they. Not and for him to see that, it just was like damn, bro. Like he was really investing in like building up this little. Greenhouse, and I guarantee your mom didn't tell him you can't do this. No, she was walking away like you know what I'm saying. She was walking away like, man, fuck this. Like I, I don't know. And my son, like, no, it gotta go here. He put that shit together. We can't cap our kids' (laughs) dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Like I love something as small as that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to be super conscious of that. So I just tried to uh, pour into these kids in the neighborhood. I mean, I'm in the hood, bro. Like, I'm in the hood. Um. My kids, homeless, uh, don't have no food, um, got to take care of their younger siblings because they mom work and they like seven, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, they need love, bro. Yeah. Like, they need unconditional love. Like, they need consistent love, you know what I mean? And they need people to pour into them so they know that they're important, you so, know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like, around the city, like, it been, like, a lot of suicides within, like, super young kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, elementary, middle school. You know what I mean? And, like, I hear elementary school kids talking about that. It's just, like, we have to intentionally be aware of our kids. Yeah, yeah. We have to literally put the phones down and and have a conversation. Like, you know what I'm saying? These kids don't even know how to talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Look people in the eyes and stuff because ain't nobody made them. You know what I mean? So I do that with my son a lot, too. It's just like, bro, tell me what's going on and don't hold back. Yeah. Like, Like, keep it G. Yeah, and it's okay. Like, I never want to, like, cap their feelings or nothing like that. Like, we always acknowledge feelings. Yep. Like, yes, it is okay for you to feel that way. Um, let's talk about it, though. Yeah. Like, what what are words? You know what I'm saying? You might not be able to say everything, but give me some words that you feel right now. Okay, why? Well, and get down to the... How do you want to feel right now? Yeah. So, who is that person for you to be there for you, like, to understand that like mentality like because you there for the kids to show them yeah. something but i would definitely say like outside of my family um life is full circle so i have my nonprofit, but i currently work for a nonprofit. okay um and that nonprofit had a school when i was younger and i went to that school um the teachers at that school were Fresh out of college, mm-hmm. um, but they were given a chance. Yep, and they were black. And I went to Lutheran schools because I had got the Ed Choice scholarship. You know how black kids get that uh, yeah. scholarship to go to uh, charter schools and private <laughs> no, schools. No, 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 like, I had one of them too. I had got one of those <laughs> things, and I never had a black teacher besides once. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, but it was people that looked like me that were encouraging me. It made me want to do my work. Like, it made me want to. I was out of control. Like, I definitely had behavior issues. I was that kid. But I had people that showed me they loved me. Like, my teachers. I got a teacher. Her name was Miss Kit. Like, or Miss Brown, Miss Cummings. Like, Miss Brown and Miss Cummings, they live in Atlanta and North Carolina. But when they come to Dayton, they call me. Like, we meet up. Like, I meet up with people that used to go off on me when I was little. But I was tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that, but they never told me nothing wrong. It was just stuff I didn't want to hear. Yeah, I, I think as an adult too, like for them to see something like that in you is just like, you know, it's like giving a chance. Like, I didn't even see it in me. 
That's what I'm saying though. But yeah. it take a it take a, a more mature individual to be like, all right, she, she lashing out for the wrong reasons. So yeah, and yeah. Like, I was so grateful. Like it wasn't just a couple teachers like that. It was all of them, except for one. We had a mean teacher, bro. He hated us. He used okay. to tell us, like, hey, I hate y'all. And that was definitely not okay. okay but yeah, other than nah, him, yeah, fuck everybody him, else was like. But you, you got to have one of them that just don't understand the the dynamic of it, though. You know what I mean? Hey, you just can't tell. Teaching ain't for everybody. Being around kids is not for everybody. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know though, man. So, like, like, I ain't going to lie. Like, it really it really ain't that easy to teach, especially oh, at, nah. the, at this. You think you could be with kids for eight hours? Fuck no. <laughs> anyway, let me finish. <laughs> no, I'm not no gonna way. lie to you, like man. I, nah, bro. If it ain't my children, like nah, I feel that. nah, bro. I, I can't do it. But, but I, that that's the respect level I do got for people who are able to adjust the children's. You dealing with a lot of different attitudes, characteristics, traumas. Yeah, and then at the same time. They're trying to mask it in their best way, and it's like you gotta have the patience to really like, you know, talk them through it or whatever yeah, case is. Though, yeah, yeah. We was talking about um, we we're talking about adaptive leadership earlier, and how what is the example of that? And I was saying like a little boy with behavior issues, and they're like, how do you say that? I'm like, because with his behavior issues, we have to adapt to all the different ways of trying to figure out what's wrong. These kids don't know how to express the way that they feel. Exactly. So, like, I got to, hey, are you hungry? Like, are you sleepy? Like, did something happen yesterday? Like, I literally got to be adaptive to really understand them so I can give them what they need. I can't tell them what they need. Right. Um, and then, like, just taking my activism and having kids, I'm turning them up, showing them that you can do whatever you want to do. Mm. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Giving, showing them the, the art of storytelling to be able to, they might have did something crazy, but when they tell you the story, you go like, okay, that makes sense. But why did you do, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. they have skills that they don't know that they're going to use. Like, I make them stand up when they talk, public speaking. Like, little yeah. stuff like All that. All the little like, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooting dice, playing cards, like, you counting, you doing work. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> Just put the sub, waiting. put the sub captions on a movie and put the t movie on mute. You gotta read it. You know what I mean. So like, just thinking of innovative ways to spark their mind because kids are bored. Like school was boring when we were in it. Definitely. Like it was boring, and these kids now they be like, oh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> like they yeah. will not do it. So it's like I think that, and that, I, that's the difficulty of it. Like because it's like the way we was raised, it was kind of like the blueprint of it. Now it's just like it's like oh, you were getting beat. They should have called children's services. It's like, bro, what? I was tripping. Like, I thought, you know what I'm saying? Not necessarily it beat, but I definitely understood expectations and discipline. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. discipline is what makes us what we are. Like, how we do what we do. Yep. Um, and these kids don't get weapons no more, and that's part of the problem. Definitely part of the problem. Say that. I told a little boy the other day, like, you know they used to get weapons in school? He like, I'm like, yeah. Man, the power tripping. Uh, Shit, nigga. The, the, shouts out to Granny for the switch. I was about to say the switch. The leather belt. The nothing the, was worse than the switch. Nah, the switch was crazy. <laughs> just to, yo, just to be able to say niggas got their ass beat with switches. Was hey, like, I be saying switches and kids be like, "What is that?" I'm like, I know you don't know. Extension but, cord. Pretty man, much. what? <laughs> God, extension bro. cord or the outdoors? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? like, man, yo, what? Go, go get the uh, twig and from the backyard. And you go get your own. You feel me? Go outside yo, and get, yo, yeah, wait a <laughs> go outside minute. and give me a switch. And you like, better not bring no little you one back. Li like, right. You literally got to go pick out what you getting your ass beat with. Say that you a black kid without saying you a black kid. <laughs> you feel me? Like, <laughs> yo, that, yo, yeah, bro. Shouts out to the 90s because that was a wild era of getting your ass beat. Man. Um, all right. So, we, <laughs> hey, yo, that was a crazy conversation. <laughs> all right. I'm about to get canceled. <laughs> Jesus My Christ. Like, Don't get canceled on that podcast. Hey, tonight. look, I'm man, like, we I'm only see. Sorry, wifey, we speak in facts. Hey. <laughs> uh, all right, so before I wrap up, I ask everybody this. Um, what is a good a good quote or a piece of advice that you live off of? That I live off of? Yep. Um, you are everything you need for everything you need. You are everything you need for everything you need. Yeah. Life is hard. Nothing is easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you wasn't supposed to do what you set out to do, you wouldn't be there. Like, God literally puts us exactly where he wants to, exactly when he wants to. 
and our steps are ordered. So, like, take it easy. Be kind to yourself. Shout out to Chipmunk Chronicles, man. Um, Say it again. Be kind to yourself. No. Oh, name, name drop yeah, it again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chipmunk Chronicles. What's up, Tyo? Let's go. Shout out to Columbus. Um, yeah. But you're everything you need for everything you need. Get it done. Period. I appreciate you. For sure. Great sure, conversation, sure. man. Look, Dreamer, uh, Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Y'all keep dreaming. We out. Name drop again. Um, the clothing line and yo, uh, yo, uh, yo so, line. So uh, this is uh, Chipmunk Chronicles. He's known mostly for the Hope Dealer shirt. Yo, non, um, yo, nonprofit. My nonprofit, Dating Young Black Professionals. We at Dating Young Black Professionals on everything. Um, the Hope Dealer, the Hood Historian, a lover of everything black. Uh, let's make it happen. You feel me? Let me put my mans on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it's all of us or none of us. I but love the whole nah. dealer though. That, that's hey, a very catchy. Man, what? I don't even know. That's like yeah, that's one. That's, of one. that's the title. Yeah, in yeah. itself. But yeah, the hope dealer. Uh, we gonna keep dealing hope. Uh, we gonna keep lifting as we climb. Uh, we gonna keep being the change that we want to see in the world. Yep. Dreamers welcome podcast. Y'all keep dreaming. We out this bitch. Dreamers welcome podcast.